All right. Raise me up. You raise me up. You hear that? One of the biggest reasons young Josh Groban has sold more than 23 million albums. He's also sold out three world tours, and he's collaborated with some of the biggest recording artists in history. New CD, DVD out today, Awake Alive. And I sat down with Josh to talk about his fans, the fame, and his life off the stage. Simply known as The Voice, Josh Groban is back. his new CD, Groban goes back to the arena where it all started. A stirring live performance before 15,000 fans who go by the name Grobanites. I recently had the ultimate Grobanite experience, a chance to sit down with a singer one-on-one. -on -one. We haven't sat down with you like this No, before. this is our first time. We've, we were just talking about how we went up in a hot air balloon at one point, and we've, <laughs> right. we always see each other in passing here, uh -huh. but uh, no, it's a great thrill to talk to you again. In all sincerity, you have been very good to us over the years. Well, ditto. I mean, when I, when I think about, you know, I, you guys are right there at the beginning to allow me to, to sing sometimes at, you know, right, right, right early in the morning. And sing he does. On his latest CD and DVD, Awake Live, Groban proves why he's a pop sensation with a classical crossover. It was shot in Salt Lake City. It was, right, yeah. And completely live. What, is there a difference when it's shot live like that as opposed to being, how is it different than being in a studio? Well, I mean, I, I love both uh, processes equally. I mean, when I'm in the studio, I, you know, you have the you have the uh, the opportunity to create something that is, you know, forever, and so you mm -hmm. do it as many times as you need to. When it's live, the great thing about it is it's just it's just one time and it's done, so you can feed that energy and you get a little more nervous about going out there. But I think those nerves are great because they they kind of bring you to a place where you're not thinking about it. I've been around now for a while, and I've seen a lot of different fan groups and that. Yours are so amazing and so giving. Mm. Um, they they follow you, of course, but also your charity work. They yeah. they become a part of it. That oh. has to just thrill you. It makes me so proud to see that their energy towards me and my music is totally equal to their energy yeah. for humanitarian efforts and, and, and things that I'm involved with. They presented me with a check for $25,000 at one of my concerts saying, we love the work that you've done in Africa. Here, start your own foundation. And then, can I, can I also be honest, when I look at them, Everyone from teenagers to grandmas, you know, you've got, you just run the game. What is it about your, your appeal? You don't really know who's out there till you go on tour. And so, actually, one of the songs in the, in the DVD, I, I, during my violinist solo, I'm actually running to the back of the house, and I'm able to walk through from the very back to the stage. I'm able to actually sing up close and walk through and shake hands and really see who's out there. When you're up on stage, sometimes it's just this abyss. And when I'm walking through, it is. I'm seeing blue-haired old ladies with, uh, <laughs> you know, with their pierced granddaughters. You're having yet another incredible year. But I have to tell you, my friend, when I saw you at the Grammys, your performance with Andrew Bocelli, Thank with, you. The, with the uh, tribute yeah. to Pavarotti, blew me away. It's been a year of full circle moments for mm. sure. I mean, uh, being able to share this stage with uh, the great Andrea, he's been a great friend of mine and somebody that was central to, to my, the beginning of my career. So uh, to add to that, to, to pay tribute to uh, mm. really one of the greatest singers of our generation was uh, a great honor for both of us. You're 27 years old. <laughs> Man, it's been, it's been amazing. When I think about the things that have happened in, that, in those mm. 10 years. So keep me away. You know, every time you take a risk, every time you think you're putting something to the side to do something else, that thing will always come back. I'm having the time of my life. Awake live in stores today, and I feel bad for our audience because, like, Josh Groban's here. I'm like, oh, well, yeah, but he'll be back performing live from Bryant Park on May 16th in part of our GMA's summer concert series. I got you on camera again. That's got to be worth something. Come on. And you can see more of my interview with the talented Mr. Groban on GMA now. Coming up. He's got millions of fans and is one of the most talented young artists in music. Josh Groban sat down with Robin Roberts to talk about his new album, Awake Live. Here's the extended interview only here on Good Morning America Now. Josh, it's good to see you. It's always a pleasure to see you, Robin. You're going to kick off our summer concert series for us. That's right. Brian Park is my first time doing that, so yeah. uh, that'll be the 16th. And uh, today I got off easy. I was able to just come and have a nice chat. This is, well, this is very good. nice for me. Well, um, because we'll be airing this with the release of your latest CD. That's right. 
and it was shot in Salt Lake City. It was, right, yeah. And completely live. What, is there a difference when it's shot live like that as opposed to being, how is it different than being in a studio? Well, I mean, I, I love both uh, processes equally. I mean, when I'm in the studio, I, you know, you have the, you have the, uh, the opportunity to create something that is, you know, forever, and so you mm -hmm. do it as many times as you need to. You know, you twist the knobs and you press the buttons and you, you, you really are able to explore and, and see how things, see how, see how things go. When it's live, the great thing about it is it's just it's just one time and it's done. So you can feed that energy and you get a little more nervous about going out there. But I think those nerves are great because they they kind of bring you to a place where you're not thinking about it. And sometimes things happen in the music that that never would have happened if you had the chance to fix it. If mm -hmm, that makes any sense, mm -hmm. you know. So when we go out and we kind of explore with these songs in front of a live audience, they change and they evolve. And so one of the one of the best reasons for me to document and archive the tour and make a DVD is because those changes have been in full effect and and that can only happen when you have the kind of the unknown element of of the live atmosphere awake live yeah and it has <laughs> we, a... <laughs> spent, we spent so long trying to think of some clever title you know like well, I like awake well just know? well because it was the awake tour so we're thinking ah. you know because because it was the, it was the tour for my album awake and mm -hmm. uh, and we just thought oh you know keep it simple big letters <laughs> get it in there bam I like it. it's a blend of some of your the music that we're familiar with and then of course the new music away. Sure. I mean, I, I, I also think that um, the reason I called it Awake Live was because I felt that this, the tour really did more justice to the songs on Awake than the actual Awake album did. Um, I think that, that getting it out there, getting it out there to the fans and, and allowing that live aspect to come take full effect, um, it really changed the way people heard those songs. And so, um, so yeah, no, it was, it, was, uh, it was a tour that really, really mostly explored the new music and, and then of course, you know, you can't go off stage without singing the stuff that is there, is, is a fan favorite. So when I look at them, everyone from teenagers to grandmas, you know, you've got, you just run the gamut. What, what is it about your, your appeal? I don't know. I mean, I, I certainly don't know. I, um, you know, you don't really know who's out there until you go on tour. And so, actually, one of the songs in, in, the, in the DVD, I... I during my violinist solo, I'm actually running to the back of the house, and I'm able to walk through from the very back to the stage. And um, it's kind of it starts off being very terrifying, but it's actually really my favorite part of the show because I'm able to actually sing up close and walk through and shake hands and really see mm -hmm. who's out there. When you're up on stage, sometimes it's just this abyss. And when I'm walking through, it is. I'm seeing, you know, blue-haired blue -haired old ladies with, uh, <laughs> you know, with their pierced granddaughters, and it's uh, it's it's really really it's really cool to see that. That my fans are just as open-minded about music and, and about you know what's out there as I am. You know that what I do is not what you typically hear or see everywhere. And I think it's really gratifying for me to see that people are discovering it anyway, and um, and that it, it really is it really is all all groups. How would you describe your sound? Um, I I would I always kind of tend to classify myself as a pop artist, but with classical influences. I mean mm -hmm. I. I grew up in the th in the kind of the theater world, and I thought that acting was what I would be doing. I always played drums, I always played piano, and I always composed. I was always in my room with, you know, in, in high school with synthesizers making all sorts of oh, no. creepy sounds, and and so you know, it, it all of those things. I didn't know what it would lead up to, but all of those things played a, a real role in in kind of creating what I think my sound is becoming now, and uh, and so I, I think it's rather than create kind of a small subgenre. For something else, I would rather say that you know let's widen what we think of as pop music, and uh, and it, it is a type of pop music that I think takes from those influences. Your your parents were very cool in, in exposing you to different types yeah. of music and and letting you uh, sample all that. Absolutely, they you know my parents are great because they are very musical, very artistic, and growing up in Los Angeles, they made sure that I took advan full advantage of everything that came through LA, mm -hmm. not just the bands and stuff that I wanted to go see, but they made sure I went and saw classical music, they made sure I went and saw everything from Cirque du Soleil to, you know, uh, all sorts of great shows. And so, um, so we grew up just kind of buzzed mm -hmm. on live performance and just thinking to ourselves that this is, this is something that we would love to do if we, if we had the chance. But they were also very realistic, you know, they're so, not in the business. So who does Josh Groban have on his iPod? Oh, my iPod's a mess. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's kind of scattered. I've got a lot of different stuff on there. Um, uh, good question. I, lo I do lo I love rock music. One of my favorite albums of the year was the um, the Eddie Vedder soundtrack to Into the Wild. Uh, he wrote really some. It was an incredible, touching story. I mean, mm -hmm. it was one of my favorite movies of the year. But he wrote just some extraordinary songs for that movie, and I've been really listening to that a lot. Um, I love the new Radiohead album this year. I thought it was really good. Mm -hmm. Anything. I love to play the drums. So when I'm practicing, anything that I can that I can listen to that has you know it's really beat driven. So 
heavy metal or whatever. You know, <laughs> I, I pretty much listen to every genre. I mean, mm -hmm. as long as somebody in the genre is is, start, is creating stuff that's new and interesting, um, you know, I like it. You know, I don't mm -hmm. really stick to one thing. You're having yet another incredible year. But I have to tell you, my friend, when I saw you at the Grammys, your performance with Andrew Bocelli, Thank with, you. The, with the uh, tribute to yeah. Pavarotti, blew me away. Thank you so much. It really did. That Thank had to you. be well, just that a was, thrill. It's been a year of full circle moments, for mm. sure. I mean, uh, being able to share this, the stage with uh, the great Andrea, he's been a great friend of mine and somebody that was central to, to my, the beginning of my career. Just because um, you know, I was fortunate enough that he was got a late flight, you know, and uh, and I had to sing at the Grammy rehearsal, singing that song, um, you know, while, while he was waiting to come in. Eventually, he got there. I was 17. I went back to high school, but um, man, almost 10 years later, to be able to stand on stage with him as kind of an equal and you know, to sing, you know, uh, sing that song with him was uh, was very emotional for me, and it was a lot of fun. And so. Uh, to add to that, to, to pay tribute to uh, mm. really one of the greatest singers of our generation was uh, a great honor for both of us. It was a powerful moment. It Thank was you a very powerful much. moment. Thank you. You're 27 years old. <laughs> I mean, do you sometimes, you know, you, you talked about when you were 17 year old, and I just dawned on me, and I'm like, you're 27, twin, a decade. It's, man, it's been it's been amazing. When I think about the things that have happened in that in those mm. 10 years, it allows me to kind of do a little bit of this, a little bit of that, but but hopefully do it all in a smart way. And, and I'm having the time of my life. Well. We always have a. We always feel that way when you're here, and so Thank we'll you see so you later much. this summer. I, I, off the I tour. really look forward to it. Thanks, Josh. Thank always you a pleasure. so much, Rob. Josh Groban's album *Awake Live* is out in stores today. More *Good Morning America* now when we come back.